calling out all my nerds, freaks, and geeks. It's mob time. Don't tune in, cut the show time. Go ahead and call the gang up for the one time. Rap food rise, got them on the line. And my life's still great, I'm doing just fine. Hands up. What's up, y'all, and welcome to the Blurred Mob, your hub for all things black and nerdy. I am your host, Poop, joined by my two co-hosts, Ryan and Ralph. If you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or any other streaming service, make sure you hit that follow button so you can get updates from the mob. And if you nerds, freaks, and geeks are watching us on YouTube, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn those bell notifications for future uploads, and engage with us in the comments and let us know what you thought about this episode. All right, all right. So we're back with episode 50 of the Blur Mop Podcast. The topics that we have for you guys today, we're going to touch a little bit on what we've been watching in the past month. We have a small update from Netflix Geek Week. We're going to talk about some recently released trailers, Anaplex Online Fest 2024, and PlayStation State of Play uh, for September 2024. Uh, but before we get into that, yes, you heard me correct. Ralph is back in the building. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. What's up? What's up? What's up? Party in the house. It's been a while. Party in the house. Always. What's been going on, Ralph? Uh, life. Life, work, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was your go-to answer when you was uh, cons- when you was yep. consistently. I mean, short, back short, here. sweet, and simple life. He back with them heavy sighs. Uh. <laughs> life, like dang. Well, we're glad like, to I'm... have you back, Ralph. Definitely glad to have you back for our fiftieth regular episode. So I know some of you are going to give, be giving us a side out and be like, you guys definitely have more episodes. But as far as regular episode podcast content, this is our 50th episode. We just celebrated our three-year anniversary of the Blurred Mob podcast. Make sure you check out our three years later video as well as our interviews. Um, we recently added two new interviews for King and Antoine. So make sure you check those out. But how you been doing, Ryan? Uh. I'm back. I'm back to spending money. I pre-ordered oh, this God. like some months ago. My mom had to mail it to me because I knew I was moving. I didn't know whose house it was going to be at. Mm-hmm. It is the Skyrim Collector's Edition vinyls for the entire Skyrim soundtrack. Y'all know this is my favorite game. And yeah. I don't got no record player. <laughs> but, but I got it. The the cover is cold. The, co- the cover hey, is you, nice. You the cover is nice. You see what I'm saying? This, this shoot, it's fired. Like the disc are red. Don't let me break nothing. The disc are red, they still sealed up, but I like it. I like it. That's what's up. I can't even be mad. I pre-ordered the uh, DVD steelbook for Arcane Season 1, and I just ordered the first... Um, I'm a, My thought is that they will be making more, but I bought the Sailor Moon collection. Shout out to Ron. Sometimes sure. sometimes his, his manga hoarding comes in clutch. <laughs> <laughs> His manga hoarding comes in clutch. I did buy some more manga too. I'm starting to. I'm yeah, we know. On, yeah, we attack know. on Titan yeah, box sets. You get in the like the ones that come in like multiple, or they've come out with like a full box set now that the anime's over. Uh, they they've been in box sets for the longest. Okay, I'm doing Parasite, the Maxim colored editions, Full Metal editions, and the Fire Force box sets. So I'm back to splurging my. Credit cards hate to see me coming again. So yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. But proceeds to tell me he ain't got no money. <laughs> I don't. I'm broke until I'm rich. <laughs> I'm broke until I'm rich. <laughs> Didn't I just see you post something about being broke? And now you are. Here I am broke. He just am... he just showed us all the reasons why he's broke. Exactly. It, this is why I'm broke. I we gotta catch all. him. That we gotta catch yeah. him before he gets on the podcast and tell us what he spent because that's where right. the money be at. Look, you gotta catch me on payday before I buy anything on Amazon. Then you'll we see got if I you. got money. We get paid at the same time, big dog. I will be on your line. <laughs> <laughs> so, how much money in your account? Listen, bro. It's I'll, be I gone. will be. I will be on your line. But let's go ahead and get into the episode. So, like I said, we're gonna start with what we've been watching for the past month. Um, just to start with me, I've been watching Agatha all along on Disney Plus. That mm-hmm. has been very good shit. I've been enjoying that. Um, I need to start The Penguin on HBO Max. I've been seeing some decent reviews on that. 
I've been watching Only Murders in the Building, season four, that's currently on Hulu. Um, from uh, the MGM Plus series, the Supernatural uh, series about the people stuck in the little spooky town, season mm-hmm. um, three. I think we're on season three. Season three of that just started, so I've been watching that. Then, as always, my continuing series, uh, My Hero Academia season seven has still been going on. Fairy Tale Hundred Years Quest and Tower of God season two. So, what about you mm-hmm. guys? Um, same for the anime, but Ralph, I, uh, to avoid spoiling anything, are you caught up on My Hero yet? Yeah. Okay, bet. My Hero been hitting. We had an off-camera yeah. conversation about My Hero Academia, and I don't know why it's hard for me to just appreciate this series at the moment. Like this season has been fantastic, absolutely. It's, it's had a it's had a lot of highs. My only complaint from My Hero season seven is that they have they have a really good high moment, and then they turn around and follow it up with like a low moment episode or something yeah, that's not exactly. Not drawing me, drawing me in. Like the episode from Saturday's episode was extremely good. Like, Very good. had a bitch tearing up watching same. it. And I'm afraid that we're going to get to the next episode and it's not going to have that same level of momentum. But the way they yeah. set it up, I think, I think it's going to be a good one. I think they're going to keep the momentum going forward. They only have. A couple episodes we're left. Done. Yeah, yeah, we're almost at the end, so they're gonna have to kick it up. You know what? I yeah, take that. They ain't got no choice. I'm not nervous at all. I what Ralph just said. They have no choice but to kick this into gear and keep this into gear until we get to the end of the season. And now that the manga over, we got what one to two seasons left. Two probably. full twenty four episode seasons, probably, mm-hmm. and they'll be over with. So we in the final stretch. We in the last leg. Um. Tower God season two has been pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Once Flute brought it to my attention that a lot of the fans were complaining about the graphics and animation, I started paying attention. I was like, mm-hmm. the animation is a little lacking, but the story is picking up. We're finna start seeing a lot of returning characters from the past season, and I'm yep. so excited to see them in this workshop battle. Um, fairy Tale 100 Years Quest is more fairy tale. I'm loving it. Uh, this past episode, have you watched the food? Tell me the one that just came out this morning. Mm-hmm. No, sir. But I already know. Um, I already know where. I already know what we lead into. I already know what we're gonna get into. Listen, we get into some real violence right now. I already know. <laughs> I already know. I already know what we're gonna get into. Because the way they ended that last episode, I said I remember this part. I I remember mm. having to close the the manga because I was like, this is crazy. It's getting nasty. It's getting nasty. Fairy tale fans, we up. Outside of my anime, though, I ain't been watching much new stuff. I've been slowly in the background watching Boondocks. I just got to the episode where um the dude got shot, and he was like, "I got shot," and you find out like he like a fake gangster and everything. <laughs> <'Cause> he... <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I'm I'm like, "Hey, yo, everything in Boondocks is still very, very relevant." I'm like, "I should have watched yeah. this." They when still I was be making. They still be making memes to this day. Boondocks. The way Boondocks memes come out are equivalent to how SpongeBob memes come out. Like people mm-hmm. talk about how there's a SpongeBob meme for everything. There is a Boondocks situation for everything. For everything. <laughs> it's wild. Like, like I honestly like I'm I'm still on season one, I believe, and it's like four seasons total. So I'm watching it slowly, like every time whenever I got some free time. But I'm like, dang. I want them to make a new season for all this stuff going on now in, in the music industry. I would love a Diddy episode. <laughs> the way that Boondocks would be, uh, I would Eating say this up. they would be, I would, I, the, the discourse, the social media discourse, if they were to drop a new Boondocks right now would be insane because, be crazy. and it is on the same level of how I feel about like celebrity death match. Like sometimes I'd be on TikTok and be seeing old clips from celebrity death match. And I yeah. was like, that right there could not exist right now. The no. discourse <laughs> that would strangle social media with some of these shows, if they were to exist today would be crazy. It would be so bad that honestly it would be worth it. Like, the amount of marketing that just from people arguing about everything they're talking about and like how they frame the community and blah blah, it'll go crazy. Right. It will go so yeah. crazy if Boondocks came back. We're gonna call us a black hole, bring Boondocks and Celebrity Deathmatch at the same time, a black hole. We'll, we'll form <laughs> and swallow us up. We will be opening a portal. <laughs> Listen, all the commentary, man. 
I, I wish I started watching it earlier, but I'm enjoying that. Aside from that, I'm just waiting for this new anime to come out next year. I mean, next season. Yeah, it, mm. you ain't got long, big dog. Like October, weeks. October is here. October mm-hmm. is here. Um, just just talking about by the time this episode comes out, I believe Vox Machina would have started. Don the Don would have started. Yeah. Like we rolling this first week of October, we rolling. Bleach coming back soon. It's a yeah. Mm. So a... you ain't oh. got long. You don't got long. I just finished Reincarnated the Slime. The last episode aired this past Friday night. Mm-hmm. It ended off on a pretty good note. Reincarnated the Slime is one of those like series I watched to just feel good, kind of like fairy tale, and I enjoyed it. They said a film is coming out, so I'm looking forward to that as well. And a new season okay. already got greenlit. All right, what you been watching, Ralph? Um, lately I've been going back and watching older shows, been missing like that mm-hmm. old kind of sitcom kind of feel. Mm-hmm. Um, lately mm-hmm. I went back and watched Reba. Uh, if you guys have watched that, it's a single good. mom who yeah. works two jobs to love the kids and never stop. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Reba is good. And Ryan, I'm dead serious. If you ever get a chance to just sit down and watch an old sitcom show, Reba is one to watch. I bet I, I watched I my first. It. Oh, you go Porsche ahead. Sing Along, which just got me b- b- feeling funny. <laughs> hey, but that theme song go hard, <laughs> that is though. Lit. Now, when, they, when they changed it to the new version, I didn't like it. The new version, I did not like. The yeah. older version. Some 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 TV shows, they hit a hit or miss when they switch theme songs. When they, yeah. they try to make it more upbeat or they try to make it more mature. Because, like, yeah. you got the cast growing up or the kids. Doing this, especially when they had kids. When the kids start growing up, they were like, we need to add some, a little some, some in here. Right. Um, other than that, I, fi- I watched my first telen- uh, telenovela, uh, Jane the Virgin. That was pretty good. I enjoyed that. Okay. Um, I've been lately watching Futurama. I've been going back watching that. I'm on season two, episode four, I want to say. Okay, so uh, you're going to catch up and get into the new seasons? Yeah. Is yeah. the new season airing now, Ralph? Yes, it is. It's I, airing now. Okay, I've been watching on Disney up. Plus lately, so mm-hmm. I'm trying mm-hmm. to get caught up. Um, other than that, I watched King and Ashura. <sighs> that hurt. The end it hurt. But the fights were actually good for this. Uh, is that an anime? Yes, yeah, an anime on uh, Netflix. Okay, because um, okay. I okay, that's where I saw it. It's pretty much it. a fight like, anime. That familiar. Yeah, it's it's actually they actually ended off pretty well, and I'm glad they did end it where they did because it all kind of fit together. And it gave it a proper ending. I don't want to spoil it, but I would say give it a watch. If you watch Bakihama, I would say give King and Ashura a watch. King and Ashura or Kingdom Ashura? Uh, King and, like King and Ashura. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to check that out. Okay. Um. Other than that, I've been watching Euphoria. <sighs> mm-hmm. I have some rights mm-hmm. about Euphoria now. Now that I've given it a second watch on season one, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit that whole high school profile. I hot take, hot take. Euphoria definitely should have been like a college uh yes. setting type vibe. Some of the themes and some of the situations going on, because I compare it to Grownish. Like yeah. Grownish is them in college. Grownish, I feel like could be in high school, and Euphoria should be them in college. Yeah. It's not that I disagree with that, but I guess I came from a little bit of a protected household when it came to high school, and it made Euphoria made me just wonder, like, dang, are other kids going through this and like getting access to this much different stuff? Like, I didn't know. I, I mean, I, I was mean, like, if I would agree with that, and that's not saying that they weren't, but I think when it came down to for me, when it came down to certain situations, especially when we got into like season two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like, some of these, I feel like some of these situations, I feel like, I guess I feel like if this was a more aged up setting, like if they were in mm-hmm. college and something, I wouldn't feel so uncomfortable with some of these situations. Yeah. But that also could, uh, that also could just be the point. Or, or like it could be a little bit of our high school experiences because I wasn't doing all that stuff. <laughs> I, I ain't doing I that stuff for my daughter. Exactly. <laughs> I ain't doing that stuff as a grown man. <laughs> they doing. I can I couldn't even imagine doing half the stuff they were doing in high school, like full, full blown out parties and 
you know, drugs everywhere. It's like what? Well, it could it could also just be the environment, like the type of if you look at the type of neighborhood that they were living in, like the people they were hanging out with, like the high school culture and stuff like that. It very this very well could have been somebody's experience. Man, my first party in high school was yeah. prom. Them other folks was going to them teenage clubs. I was like, oh my gosh, what happens at the teenage clubs? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 went to, I went to a couple parties when I was in high yeah. school that wasn't like school delegated events. But even then, they were not, or they I not did like not that. experience that on the <laughs> scale of what they was doing in Euphoria. What are you doing yeah. at your high school? What are y'all doing at y'all high school parties? Man, we was just all them uh-huh. dance songs was coming out. Mohead, we was jigging. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody had a mohead line. Yeah, that's all we was Bro. doing. Okay. Um, what was I gonna say though? But Euphoria season three, I wonder how they're gonna tie that in because now they're aging everybody up. Like everybody's yeah. supposed to be grown. Everybody's supposed to be in college now. I think they're past college. Oh, so they're passing yeah. college. I think I they're grown, grown. Is what the last so. is what the last thing I heard. They said Rue's supposed to be like a detective. Like she got a big girl job. Like she got a career. <laughs> like why are they skipping so far ahead? I don't know. I mean, it's been a long I mean, time could, where it's going to feel like a reboot, but still, I I I don't know it. I don't know why they're aging it up. My theories could be that because of when season two drops and whenever they start getting into season three, it might be so much of an age gap that you, we can't look at these actors and be like, oh, you're still in high school. Maybe they yeah. got to age them up. I mean, we could think college would be appropriate. Yeah. I, that's fair if they did college, but they also could just be like, go ahead and age them up completely. Mhm. That's interesting. I don't know. I just, I just hope they get it right. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Cause I, I felt like season two of Euphoria was all over the place. Yeah. Like there was no like straight line of a plot. Like I understand having a plot, and then you have like you know separate plot lines, like side quests, like season. I feel like mm-hmm. season one was done perfectly well with here's the continuing timeline of Rue and then here's all these other side stories of all of these other characters and then we get to season two and then the shit's all over the place. I ain't gonna yeah. lie. I got a slight rant. And it ain't gonna be long. The way they did McKay in season one of Euphoria was wrong. It was so many moments they could have actually picked up his character and made him feel a little bit more important in my eyes. Like the whole scene of him, you know, getting initiated in um in his first college party when he was with Cassie. Mm-hmm. They ended up raiding his room, berated him, made him feel less of a man, and it showed in the scene. After, you know, as we continue on with the story, him and Nate Jacobs pretty much almost get to fighting at the New Year's party. Nothing happens. Why is there no blow up for him? I I think that just goes back to my complaint of the, of them not having a consistent plot yeah. for season two. Because I feel like at a certain point, a lot more people cared about what was going down between Cassie and Maddie than what was going on with Rue and all of these uh, other yeah. like plot elements and stuff that they were that they were trying to continue from season one. But you put this big red blot in the middle of the plot line, and that's all I was seeing up and down my TL. Right. Was McKay relevant much in season two? It's been a few years since I watched no. Euphoria. No, McKay, I, I have not seen two. McKay yet, and I just been this part. Yeah. Of him and of season him two. and Cassie broke up, and that was the end of it, the end of yeah. him. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, because it was just Maddie and Cassie at one point. There, because I like their story. I thought their story was the most interesting. But, but it was interesting. But at the same time, coming off of season one. And understanding who's the main character and who, what the main storyline is and how these characters are supposed to play into that. I feel mm-hmm. like it overshadowed a lot of things that should have been the main focus of Euphoria Season 2. Yeah, mm. I agree. They they pulled a JJK, you know, who was the main character. Exactly. Honestly. Mm. Look at so you. hopefully, whenever, whenever they come back with Season 3, because we still don't know. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but all right. So we talked about a lot of series. We talked about a lot of things coming up. So make sure you stay in tune with the mob. Follow us on our social media platforms um, to check out when we're doing mob reviews, whether they're recorded on, on social media. So you can see how we feel officially about some of these series as they come to a close. So moving on to Netflix Geek Week, we have a full episode for Netflix Geek Week. So make sure you check that out after you finish this episode. But we forgot one small update from Netflix Geek Week, and we want to handle that in this episode, is that it was announced that another cyberpunk series is coming to Netflix with CD Projekt Red. So just diving into, they didn't say much, but just diving into what they didn't say is that in the little teaser thing or in the discussion of it, there wasn't any mention of cyberpunk edge runners. So this is it's possible that this new series is not going to be a sequel to that. And there was no mention of Studio Trigger, who was the animation studio behind Edge Runners. In fact, it mentioned Netflix animation, which um, could also probably lead to the fact that this is not going to be a sequel to Edge Runners, that this might be a completely new cyberpunk series um, by Netflix animation and CD Projekt Red. Is Netflix Animation actually a studio? Are you sure that's just not how Netflix likes to say they got publishing rights? Because sometimes they'll say yeah. Netflix exclusives or Netflix very own series, but they say that for Seven Deadly Sins and series like that. It's not theirs. They just got the publishing rights. They said Netflix Animation, the streamer's in-house studio that co-produces and develops animated features sometimes with external studios. Okay, so co they it might be a, they might be collaborating with another Japanese studio then. So. But I, feel, but I feel like if it was tied to Edge Runners, I feel like they definitely would have mentioned Edge Runners or the studio or Studio Trigger if they were working with them. Yeah. I would love it if Studio Trigger came back because I felt like their art style for Edge Runners was sublime. Was... Is that the proper word? Sublime. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was good. It, the the actual animation for it was good. The only thing I didn't like too much about it was the trailer that they showed. The trailer was very flashy versus the show, in my opinion. The trailer for Edge Runners? Yeah. I can't remember the trailer. I can't remember I can't the trailer. Argue, I can't argue with that though. Huh. I don't I don't know because it makes sense for them to not do a sequel to Edge Runners. Like I'm f I feel the same way about Shogun. I don't know if that's gonna come up in discussion today, but like the story of um David and Lucy and the gang was perfect. I think they we started great... and ended it well. They didn't end it in a way that was like, oh, we need to make a season two for this. Right. Yeah. Like if they did, it would just bring Lucy back. But at the same time, I don't want this to turn into some Scooby Doo, oh, we on a new mystery type thing and we just follow her. Like her story was amazing. Start a new series, have some Easter eggs where she pops up and we're able to be like, oh my God, there's Lucy. There's David's jacket hanging on a a pole or somewhere because all the gang members love them. Like, let their story be in. Let or make story a story, in. or make a story that focuses on a new set of characters that are handling the effects from Edge Runners. Because yeah. those last couple of episodes of Edge Runners, David and them Ooh. did some damage. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, so now that Lucy chilling on the moon, right? Now that Lucy chilling on the moon, David and them are like they didn't kick the bucket. Like, how is everybody else that was in that same business? dealing with the effects of what they did how is the city coming to terms that this really just went down and the thing is edge runner i mean cyberpunk the world of cyberpunk is so huge like folks forget there's more than just liberty city is that the name of it i might be getting i think it's night from city from night city. i'm getting i said liberty city from grand theft auto <laughs> but like there's uh, there's other major cities like in the dlc for cyberpunk 2077 we start seeing like folks from the un and everything of that nature like the world is so expansive, they don't even have to focus on their group. They could do in the past, they could do in the mm -hmm. future, they could do at the exact same time and follow Adam Smasher and whatever mission he's on. Like, there's a lot of room to just make amazing spinoff series for this. Yeah. I agree. I agree. So, they said more news on the Cyberpunk series is supposed to be coming soon, so we'll just have two, to wait. Two years away, probably. 
twenty twenty six, maybe early the series, but I but I think they might I meant coming soon as like more news, like what it's gonna be about, yeah. who's really gonna be over it and things like that. Who's it gonna focus on? Like they can release those details early. I could see that coming out in like early twenty twenty five. Or if they had or if they had already been working on it and they close to the end, they just w- weren't at a position to release a full length trailer at Netflix Geek Week, but they had enough to was like, we can go ahead and announce this. We can go ahead and start building the anticipation. Depending on how they handle it, because mm-hmm. 2077, they already admitted that they're working on a sequel. 2077 came out a year and a half ago, two years ago, the video game. Uh, Didn't it come out two, in like 20... Two? Was it 20, was that twenty two? I want to say two years ago. Because the DLC was twenty twenty three when I was playing it, right? That wasn't early twenty twenty four, right? No. It came out. Cyberpunk came out in twenty twenty. December twenty twenty is when Cyberpunk mm-hmm. came out. Off. So I think I think the update came out in like twenty twenty one, and that's when you went oh, to go like play the, it again uh, when they yeah. fixed all that when they fixed all that shit. You're right. And when did the DLC come out? Because I DL- know that this was that this year. I thought the DLC. I, I thought I, Phantom Liberty thought came the, out this year. I thought that was twenty twenty three. Was I playing Phantom Liberty that early? I I swear I thought you played that this year, or maybe it was. I was playing, I was playing Elden Ring DLC d- this year for sure. Okay, it was twenty twenty three. Phantom Liberty was twenty twenty three. If oh. I remember correctly, the studio was all hands on Phantom Liberty, and they announced that they are going to work on a sequel. So if the new game, let's just say. Five years away, four, five, six, seven, eight. If they mm-hmm. drop some edge run, not edge runs, but some animated series like two or three times, that'll be some good promotion for the actual next video game. Yeah, because Cyberpunk Edge Run has definitely got more people to pick up oh, yeah. the original game. Yeah. And CD Projekt Red is probably going to be ne- dropping the next Witcher in about two years or so. Like we know mm-hmm. they've been working on it, have that nice little two, three year gap in between their major IPs. That'll be fire. That'll be fire. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, five years though was crazy. <laughs> yeah. You got it. You got it. But that's um we just wanted to touch on that piece from Netflix Geek Week. Like I said, the you can find the full video um that we discuss everything coming out of Netflix Geek Week 2024 on our channel. We discuss Avatar The Last Airbender, Arcane Season 2, The Devil May Cry, Animated Series, Sakamoto Days, and all that jazz so make sure definitely make sure you check that out but moving on we got some recently released trailers we got the official teaser for thunderbolts we got the trailer for the john wick spinoff series ballerina we also got a trailer for uh, ryan coogler and michael b jordan centers and we got um the trailer the first trailer for last of us season two so what are you guys' thoughts? Hmm. The Thunderbolts, the Thunderbolts trailer actually looked pretty all right. I like I like the fact that it seems to me that Yelena is looking for her purpose now that you know her her um best friend uh sister is pretty much gone. So she's trying to refine her purpose in life and pretty much goes on this whole Thunderbolts journey. It seemed like it's gonna be pretty good. I think it's gonna be lit. It's oh. it's gonna be lit. Like the trailer, I I watched the leak from D twenty three, but then I now that I can see it with like better quality and sound and stuff like that. Yeah. Thunderbolts. I think Thunderbolts is gonna be lit. That is my number one anticipated movie for twenty twenty five. I think Thunderbolts is gonna go stupid. If they are yeah. deeming this Mar- Marvel Suicide Squad, I think this is gonna go stupid. Yeah. And Can y'all remind me who the people chain. are? So you wouldn't know who Yelena is because you didn't watch Black Widow or Hawkeye. Yeah. But Yelena is okay. Yelena is Black Widow's younger sister. Yeah. And and she's been doing like contract kills and things like shadow ops and stuff like that. That's been her gig. Uh US Agent was supposed to be the Captain America replacement and Falcon and the Winter Soldier. That was the whole conflict between him and Sam. And he ended up taking the super serum, but he just went like batshit crazy with it. And they ba- basically they canceled him. Okay. So that's where he's at. <laughs> um you already know about Bucky. 
yeah. Ghost, if you remember, is from Ant Man and the Wasp. Also, Contract Killer. She got her powers from working on some some experiment that went wrong, and that's what got her her phasing powers. Taskmaster is also from the Black Widow yeah. franchise. She um back a little bit back backstory on that. She got injured during a plot that Black Widow did for her to basically separate herself from the Red Room. Okay. Um, Sentry is new. He this is this will be his first time coming inside of the MCU, but he's basically like Superman. Hmm. He's okay. a power. He's a powerhouse, bulletproof powerhouse, stuff like that. And then Red Guardian is also from the Black Widow franchise. He, um. I they're not their real dad. Like in the trailer, you hear Yelena calling him dad. That's not their real dad. Yeah. But when they first met, they were posing as a family, but they were really sent in to steal information from Shield. But she was so okay. young; she was like three when the whole operation started that she only knows him as dad, even though they're not blood related. That makes okay. Sense. And he was also a Captain America clone for like um like how Bucky was, how they kidnapped Bucky and injected him with the super soldier serum. Yeah. He was the same way. Mm, Just without okay. the mind control stuff. Okay. okay. Cause I was watching it and I was like, it does look cool. I just didn't know who the people were. I was like, I see Bucky. <laughs> I, was like, I, I was like, I know I'm missing. I was, I was like, I know I'm missing something that all other of people are has, probably excited about. All of about. them has done shady stuff. So these are not yeah. like Hero heroes. And these are not hero heroes. Anti anti heroes at best. Okay. Yeah. Um, ballerina looked interesting. Um, I know Ryan, you got you probably have a lot more to say than I do about ballerina. I don't want to be spicy with ballerina. I'm gonna say this. <laughs> not it spicy. Looks, <laughs> Cause it looks good enough to where. I will watch it as a fan of John Wick. It's just the decision making for the main character because essentially she's going to be a surrogate into the series and it seems like she's following the same story as John Wick in terms of how he started. He, mm -hmm. he was an orphan. Most of the people who come under the table are orphans. Kids just taken in to become assassins. And she joined the same family with old girl who has the ballerinas and the wrestlers, which we saw in the third movie or the fourth movie when he got that tag added. When he got his tag pulled and she had to tat him on the back. And I was interested in why they chose her instead of just doing like a John Wick origin story. Because I would have loved to see him become the Baba Yaga before he found his wife and fell in love and the dog and what we now see in the four movie sagas. Mm -hmm. I would have been interested to see that more so than her. But I'm not mad at it. I'm also surprised that they went with a new character being that the movies do have a lot of interesting side characters. When you look at common the character he played in john wick one mm -hmm. when you look at akira who was the daughter of his homeboy in chapter four and how she's been to hunt down his other friend who's blind i'm like we could have i thought we could have seen a story about her if That's she's not going to show up in chapter I five have minded that. or or the black guy who we see in, cha in john wick chapter four who is in his oh, early phases of the fashion yeah and that would be called too yeah, like he's just now figuring out, like, oh, this is what it means. Like, I'm thinking I'm I'm hot shit, and I'm trying to hunt down the Baba Yaga. And it's like, bro, you just got your hand slit. You don't even know how these contracts and when giving your prints and all this stuff even come from. So it's not that I'm mad at it. I'm just like, you don't know where the influence is coming from. Yeah, and it makes me wonder, like, is this gonna be blind? Like, maybe y'all just wanted to tell a new story and introduce a new character. But I'm like, if you want to expand the John Wick universe there are already characters that someone like me as a fan already has an affinity for. I would have loved to see an Akira. If this series was about her hunting down John Wick's homeboy who was blind, oh my gosh, that would have ate. That would have ate. Like, you got me hooked. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to see if Common mm -hmm. survived from when John Wick put that knife through his abdomen and was like, if you're moving, you're going to die. You better go to a hospital. And he just sat there. Like, or just his origin story. And they are featuring him in it. They showed him at the end. I don't know how relevant he's going to be. Because for the fact that they're throwing him in there, he's pretty much going to immediately overshadow her as a character. I think just because they, of how beloved he is. I think they threw him in there so people can watch the series. That too. Probably. And he might I, only show up for a few seconds. He, he probably might show up for a couple seconds and dip. 
Mm-hmm. But they put him in the trailer to be like, oh, John Wick's going to be in it. I'm going to definitely check that out. That's what that's what it gave to me. Yeah, yeah which, which makes me think, like, are y'all... If y'all was confident in this series, being in the John Wick universe, I think y'all could have avoided using John Wick, which makes me question how good it's going to be. And I'm going to watch it. It looks like it has potential. The fight choreography's there. Baby girl definitely seemed like oh, she yeah. went through she, a fight she training. Oh, yeah, she about her business. Now, that, that yeah. action, the action scenes that they did show, oh, she's about yeah. her business. When she threw that bomb on Buddy and closed the and door closed and the stood door. behind it, yeah. I was like, yeah. that was excellent. That was excellent. We're also finna get some more history. We're seeing um Watson, Winston, whatever the old dude, the old Italian dude over the um continental name is, and how he's the one who adopted her and mm-hmm. brought her into the table. I'm interested mm-hmm. to see how that plays out if they're going to expand the universe and show us how more of this works. But I'm just confused as to why y'all picked a new character. I'm Maybe. just a little confused about that. I would agree with that. And it could possibly be that um Maybe they did want to show like the process of coming to the table and building up to that assassin life, and maybe they just decided to go use a new character to tell that progress instead of doing here's mm-hmm. pre dog John Wick. All right. And look, and if that's the case, I'm not mad at it. Shoot, if they wanted to go a DC route and do um. Like how they did the Penguin series, they could have followed the um, what's the dude, the Baron, the black guy? I forgot the actor, the actor's real Talking name. About but Lawrence he, Fishburne character. Yeah, they could have followed his storyline and how he f- works with these poor folks in his upbringing. Like, there's so many side characters but in I the main also, line franchise. And this I'm is not they ain't doing. And this is not the shit on the studio, but I believe this series is supposed to be on Peacock. And how much money do they actually have for like actors like Lawrence Fishburne? And the characters that are in the movies, like budget, like budgeting, could be a factor too. And this is no like, mm, this is not yeah. shitting on Peacock, but you also have to think of like budget and how much money they have. Like, I'm sure to get Keanu Reeves to even show the up, the price it, is up for Keanu now. That that's what I'm saying. So like, I like I don't know how much money that studio actually had to put into this series to where they couldn't have those high profile actors from the movie in here they had to take what was necessary like winston i'm sure uh r.i.p to lance reddick but i'm pretty sure if he was still living they probably would have included him in the show too yeah 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 and you know what it's just interesting it's interesting like i'm gonna check it out well shoot if it's on peacock how much is a peacock subscri- subscription i think it's like Five dollars for the basic. <sighs> Y'all Somewhere know between it. five and seven dollars for the basic. Don't let me commit myself to something. I might check it out if it's since it's on Peacock and not like a mainline thing that I already have, like Hulu or something like that. But yeah. I'm I'm mid. When it comes to my interest, I'm in the middle. The trailer looked good. I'm just surprised at some of y'all's decision making. If y'all said this was in combination with Max and you're following like John Wick coming up or Kira or the black guy with the sniper, or Common, or Lawrence, or any other character, I would have definitely been sold as a John Wick fan. This did, didn't sell me, it tempted me. Did I say this was a series? Because now that I I'm thought, looking yeah. now that I'm looking this up, they said this is supposed to be a film. The ballerina's a film, not a series? Yeah, I'm looking it up. I searched ballerina John Wick. They're saying that this is a film. That makes me question it even more. Like, Why? Oh, they said Lance Reddick is in the series. Yeah, they showed him in the trailer. I forgot to correct you on that. So this was probably recorded way before he passed away or halfway through his passing. I don't remember seeing him in that. Maybe I wasn't looking close enough. He was standing at the Continental when she came. In the trailer, she walked up to him and he was like, welcome to the Continental. Oh, is that when she put the coin down? Yes. Okay. I remember her putting the coin down, but I didn't remember who she was talking to because they showed Winston right after. And I was like, oh, she must have been talking to Winston. Yeah. But oh, this is gonna be in theaters. Where did I get Peacock from? A food. Come on now. Hold on now. Mm. Hold on now. Now you're confusing me because I <laughs> all right. hold on. All right, all right, all right. Final, final. We are correcting ourselves. Final details. Ballerina is a movie, not a series. This is going to be in theaters, not on Peacock. Not sure where I got Peacock from. 
and it's coming out June 6, June 2025. 6, 2025. Okay. I I I just now that I know it's a film, honestly, I hate to say it, it makes me a little less excited. I thought it was mm. a series. I sincerely thought this was a series. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. I don't know. Cause, Cause, now everything I said earlier is even more like has more oomph behind it. Like, why didn't y'all just do a prequel and show John going growing up under the table or any of the other side characters? I, I'm still hyped. I mean, I, I'm gonna still stand beside that it's still probably budget, whatever amount of money they had to make this movie. I'm still going to tie it down to budget, but not from the sense I take it back that the Peacock stuff. I thought it was a series, it's a movie. The actress, the main actress, Ana de, Ar- Ana de Aramis, it seems like she was in No Time to Die, Knives Out, Blade Runner, Ghost. That's where I remember her from, mm-hmm. Knives Out. I was like, she looks familiar. Yeah. So she's she looked like the director is Lynn w- Wiseman. Did he direct the other John Wick movies? What did he direct? I don't know. I... I he directed Underworld. I love the Underworld series. Seems like all of them. I love the Underworld movie saga, saga. But that's about it. That's the only major films he's directed. I don't know. I don't know. I'm- we'll see. I Maybe this is something we have to wait and see what like everybody else says about it. Make sure he's not one of those. This is not one of those. Are we in theaters for two weeks and then we on digital on the third? Yeah. It's so confusing you know. now. Oh, that... that mm. Mm. As a fan, I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have done that. I'm gonna do uh, another John Wick marathon. <laughs> I would have done that. I don't know what the the thought behind it was, but the other two trailers, um, Sinners and The Last of Us season two. Sinners seems interesting. I don't know if I would go to the theaters to watch it. Um, but it's supposed to be where Michael B. Jordan is playing twin brothers, and one of them is supposed to be a vampire. Mm-hmm. And then this is supposed to be set back, and I won't. I'm not sure what the time period is, but there yeah. we basically we do have like the the racism deal going on. I I just can't remember what year they're in, but it's supposed to be a vampire movie. That I know for sure. And this is the film that Ryan Coogler is over, right? Yep. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna go check I... it out. I'll check it out. I'm typically, even though I never watch any of the Creed's, I'm typically a fan of Michael B. Jordan's works when he's in them. Yeah, I like. I want to see the. I want to see the reviews, or I, or I would like to see another trailer because I only know it was a vampire movie from when they first started talking about it. But then when I watched the trailer, I didn't see any vampires, and I was like, okay, the the horror aspects are there. But I was right. like, isn't this supposed to be a vampire movie? And then where his brother at? And I'll and I'll give it this. We haven't seen a good vampire werewolf style movie in a minute. It's in terms of series, no, like they had their haven't. phase in the early two thousands and two thousand tens. We ain't seen many good ones in a minute. Yeah, and if it's and if it's black vampires, I would love to see Ryan Coogler's take on like black supernatural and monsters and stuff like that. Yeah, that's. I guess that's more so why I'm interested in going to go see it is to see if they, he can actually get that horror aspect across. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because... And you said you couldn't tell what time period? Like, if racism's playing into a Jim Crow era? Is it in the... It, Let do me we see. know the setting? Is it in the South? Like, Louisiana type stuff? It didn't ha- It didn't look too much like a setting. It did look more... more. It did look so 1930s. It is in the South. Ralph yeah. is correct. It's in the South. South 1930s. So this is even before. Yeah, this don't is mess post up your history because they're gonna get mad at us. Yeah, I think yeah, they, I think this is post like Roaring Twenties or something. Okay, and we're gonna have vampires. Yeah, this is yeah. in Jim Crow. Jim Crow okay. was from the nineteen eighties to nineteen sixties. I was going to say that, but like Ron said, I ain't want to be wrong. 
You said that's how I like it. I felt it. I felt it. We are the blurred mob, so maybe you get it exactly right. (laughs) I felt it. I was like, that's the right answer. But the Google is right here. Google is what they be saying on Twitter. Google is free. (laughs) Okay, if that's interesting, because because Lovecraft Country, I watched the. I think I watched like the last three episodes. Don't I forgot why? I think I said on the platform, but like it did like the whole fantasy. Jim Crow era black folks and how it incorporated yeah. them. So this might be a similar feel, more than likely. You said what show you watched the last three episodes? Lovecraft of? Country. Was it Lovecraft Country, the one with yeah. um? Yeah. Yeah. I thought you said Last of Us, and I was like, "What are we talking uh-uh. about?" Uh uh-uh. uh uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, I was like, oh, he's switching the Last of Us." Then he started talking about Jim Crow, and I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> <laughs> what, are we, what, are we, what are we? What are we talking you about? But it, it, but yeah, love, <laughs> Lovecraft, Lovecraft Country had the same type of like supernatural type vibe. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it, and if I want it. Should I be divisive? Ralph's back. I'm going to be divisive. I'm going to be divisive. Oh, God. <laughs> we don't always got to put black folks in, in, in Jim Crow era to put some magic around us, too, y'all. We can do some black folks in just general fantasy. I just want to remind y'all that, Hollywood. Just wanted to remind y'all. I would save that statement. I don't disagree, but I would save that statement until the film actually comes out. Until it because comes if out. They, yeah. Because if they execute it well and it fits in the time period the way that, like, if we're talking about vampires and if we and if they go into their origins and where they came from and if it fits, then mm-hmm. then I wouldn't be mad. But if it's not executed well and it's just like, okay, you guys just pick this time period just to, you know, black movie, black vampire movie, then I would say, then let's have that conversation. Yeah, but I'm also yeah. confident it's going to be at least decent. Like Ron Coogler has proven mm-hmm. himself as a director. Michael B. Jordan is a very solid is a solidified actor. He is doing great. Like they have they have the tools and the resources to make something good. It's yeah. just as a vampire world fan who loved Underworld, who loved Twilight, I wouldn't mind if we just had some black folks in modern time or way 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 fantasy time. Like shoot, right. I... vampires. Vampires in Kenya might go hard. I don't know. I think this might if if this goes well, if they pull this off, and I'm not saying that I have doubts that they don't, but if this goes this com- go, comes out and this goes up, a lot of people are going to be side eye Marvel with that Blade movie. A lot of people are going to be side eye Marvel it will in be that an Blade comparison. movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're right. Not even a comparison. There, the Blade movie, that Blade movie that they've been talking about for years, has yet to start production. Yeah, it's getting point. Didn't it's they, getting to the point switch now. Directors again, or did the director switch leave? directors, writers? It's getting to the point now that they don't even know, know if that movie is going to get made, if it's even going to be in the slate. Like that's how bad it's getting. Is Ryan Coogler mm-hmm. directing another Marvel movie at the moment? They better call not, him up. Not at the, oh, I no. I know they had talks about Black Panther three. Now they could be having him on the slate for that. But honestly, truly, if they pull this off, Kevin Feige, you might want to put him on the Blade movie. Y'all, y'all might want to get y'all y'all Marvel get your money because if he do a good job with this, he's proven if himself he, already. Yeah. yeah, he he's proven himself already. But if but it, if, if this if, turns out too good, if they, y'all might want. <laughs> A lot of people, a lot of people are going to be sad because I was reading the comments of the trailer and they was like, ain't no way Ryan Coogler made a vampire movie and they Marvel didn't put him on Blade. Yeah. 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 Because if it come out fire and, ooh. That's that's going to be rough. I'm saying a lot. I'm I'm telling you, a lot of people are going to be side eyeing Marvel and it's not going to be. It's not gonna be because it's a black vampire. It's gonna be because y'all know what Ryan Coogler can do. He didn't yeah. brought y'all money to the box office, and it's black folks, and that that that, 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 that do count. That do count. That, it does count, but I'm not. I'm saying yeah. that's not going to be the only thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's going to be that you know how this guy works. You know that he can bring you to to the money to the box office, and if he pulls this off. There's gonna be some side eyes. There are going to be some side eyes about mm. that Blade movie. Mm-hmm. That is a good hot take. Ooh, it, it, that's a, it. Because if it come out good, if it's at least a seven out of ten, that's gonna be tough on Marvel. If it's at Marvel least an objective seven out of ten, 
It really, it really just. Marvel will be on the clock if that movie does well. They Blade gonna have to be three years later so that they so that people can let the hype die down from this movie if it comes out. I would movie. be I it all goes into the execution. I would be interested to see what comes comes out of that in regards to Blade. If if I would be interested to see. Yeah. I just brought it up because when I was reading the comments, I saw a few comments about Blade. And I was like, that's a good point. That's an interesting point. That's a good point. That, that's a that was that's a an interesting point. point. I was like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even mad at you on that. Oh, oh, Ryan Coogler finna get in his bag though. How old is he? Oh, he rich. I, I, I think he's, I think he's pretty young. Yeah, like early thirties, young, or even he ain't in his twenties, right? He like thirties, young. I saw a picture of him. He ain't got no gray in his hair yet, so he got to be less than forty. He I is thirty-eight. Thirties. Oh, he's late thirties. Oh, yeah, he. Late 30s. Ooh, he making bank. Yeah. He finna make bank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he rich. This is like a Michael B. Jordan and Ryan Coogler is that director actor combo. Mm. Yeah. Because we've seen another relationship like that. Was it like Michael Bay and somebody, or you know, I'm not good with names. I'm getting better. But... I don't think it was Michael Bay. I think it might have been Christopher Nolan and somebody. I th- yeah, it was somebody. But that's a, mm. he finna get some money. Yeah, I, Michael, I'm. Now that we've had this discussion, I'm definitely. I hope they release another trailer. I'm interested to see like the whole vampire concept. But if even if they don't release another trailer, the concept behind it, it being Ryan Coogler, is enough to was like I want to check this out. But I still want to see the reviews, though. I I still want to see the reviews. Okay. Hmm. But okay. um. Quick who's thing the, on last, touch? huh? Who's the production studio behind Sanders? I think it's Warner Brothers. I think okay. that's yeah. what I saw. Hmm. But you got it. You can switch to Last of Us. I'm, yeah, I'm it's Warner Brothers. Okay. It comes out March 7th, 2025. But I was just going to say my quick big bit on The Last of Us Season 2. I was reading the comments. A lot of people got some high hopes for this. Seems like some of the scenes they showed in the trailer reminds them of the video game. And I think that's the best thing you can hope for out of a video game adaptation. So Honestly, yeah. I need to go back and finish season one because I looked at the season two trailer and I was like, this looks like this shit finna get bad. So I was like, let me go ahead and get caught up with season one before this drop. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I have nothing to say. I'm I, I, a I dirty have Xbox fan. <laughs> he, he said he ain't even touched the game. He said he couldn't even get the game. He looking at even. he looking at his Xbox like we can't even get the game. <laughs> like, like maybe it feels like a. <laughs> he said I can't even. He said Look, I can't even get the game. I still got so many PlayStation exclusives I'm supposed to play that I ain't touched yet. I ain't Ooh. touched my game controllers. They just remastered. Um, I won't say remastered, but the PS5 Pro dropping and we'll talk about this when we get to playstation state of play they did yeah. do they enhanced some games for the ps5 pro in the last of us the second one i believe mm-hmm. is the one that they enhanced for the ps5 pro okay hmm. okay i need to get back in my gaming bag i i played so- smash brothers ultimate last night against a level nine cpu and it gave me a run for my money i'm like oh man i suck now oh <laughs> <laughs> he said, let me get back in the field. But moving on to Anaplex Online Fest 2024, we got a lot of announcements for anime such as solo leveling. Um, Where is it? Sword Art Online, Alternative, Gun Gale Online, which Ryan is looking forward to, Blue Exorcist, Roroni Kenshin, and a couple more anime. I was kind of into I read the synopsis for Demon Lord 2099. Mm-hmm. And I think I might check that out. But out of those announcements, um, other than the ones I stated, were you guys looking forward to anything else or have a bit more information on the ones that I did announce? Um, no. I'm still... I'm I'm honestly just excited for solo leveling. I'm not mad at that. I... The thing with solo leveling, because we did do a review for it, I... 
I, I saw some people comment under our old review because we complained more so about the lack of a plot development, mm-hmm. even though and they, how they went straight into the action. is Action is good, but if y'all have some plot, it'll be a 10 out of 10 anime. I'm tr- I hope that we get some more story. I hope we get more character breakdowns. I hope I think we see more to Jin Woo's friends. Because I remember what comment you're talking about. I think the guy said that going forward, we're about to get more into the plot elements. Mm-hmm. I want to see that. I hope they do a good job at it because solo leveling, y'all already got the graphics, animation, yeah. combat, skill set, the world setting. All that's already fire. It's yep. already fire. It's still going to be with Give A1. It's still going to be with A1 Pictures, which we also talked about in the mob review with the um, the situation that was happening. where We weren't sure if they were going to be animating the second season mm-hmm. or not. So it's still A1 Pictures and... They announced that solo level in season two is coming January twenty twenty five, which is fire. All right. Um, Windbreaker, we ain't really get much updates, but I know Foop, you fell off of with it. Ralph, did you watch it? Did you enjoy Windbreaker? I can't remember. I haven't started it yet. It's next on my list. They're kind of in the same boat as solo leveling. Like they did try to do some plot, and it was solid, but I feel like it could get better. The combat okay. and fight choreography is perfect. Is perfect in my eyes, so I do want to see more of that. Okay. Gun Gale Online. For the folks who who don't know much about sword art, Gun Gale Online was honestly a really lovely spinoff. Really lovely spinoff. If y'all ain't watched season, watch it before. Go watch season one. If Sword Art Online made peak your interest, you watch season two. It's like, dang, they did the same thing as season one all over again. Watch Gun Gale Online. Completely new character, same world, but it's actually well executed. I never thought that they was going to do a season two, so I'm glad to see that. Blue Exorcist looks fire. We just, I don't know if we're done with the Illuminati saga. I can't remember based off that last episode because they still hinting at it. So I, I don't know the art style and saga um um style for Blue Exorcist. I don't, I'm not as familiar with it because I stopped reading the manga a while ago. But the animation looks fire. We finna see more about Yukio and um how the Illuminati is going to interact with him. So I'm looking forward to that. Blue Exorcist is one of my sleeper hits, in my opinion, for Battle Shonen. I think, I think that's it. Roroni Kenshin, I'm excited. The last season was a little slow. I want to see them improve, but that's about it. I think. I think that's about it for me. Yeah, I, I'm in the boat with Ralph. I think my right now for out of the announcements, my I'm looking forward to solo leveling season two. Yeah. Um. And I'm. I'll check. The Demon Lord thing seemed a bit interesting just off the synopsis. So I'll check that out, see if I like mm-hmm. it or not. But that was pretty much it. What was the synopsis for Demon Lord? That one didn't pick, catch my eye. Is it, it was, like an isekai or something? Kind of. So it's basically the Demon Lord wakes up in 2099. Like he woke, they say he woke up earlier than he was supposed to or something happened. And he woke up, and now he's living, now everything's all futuristic and stuff, and he's trying to adjust to the domain and reconquer and stuff like that. Okay, like some Samurai Jack stuff. Yeah. Okay, I did see that trailer. If you watch the first two or three episodes and you say it's good, let me know. I will. We'll talk about it on the pod, but if you you enjoy it, okay. Okay. I'll let you know. But, um... So moving on to our video game area. So we got a few announcements before we hop into PlayStation State of Play. So Assassin's Creed Shadows has been pushed back to February 14th, 2025, instead of November 14th, 2024. The statement um, was that um, they needed more time to polish and refine the experience, pushing further some of our key features. So... How many Assassin's Creed games have been pushed back from their original release date? I can't even remember. I am worried, honestly, about oh, this God. game now. No, because I can recall when they've done that. They've probably they, if and if somebody be like, "Man, they did it with Valhalla." What you talking about? Then I just forgot. But from what I remember, the pre-orders were not looking that good. There's still controversy around the game, whether you're on the side of what they should have and could have and would have done with their characters. That's very divisive, and I'm not going to bring that up because we already already talked about it in enough. But I don't know. 
I because when it comes to that release date, they might be trying to get into a window where it's not too many games. But I think some games are dropping around that time frame. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's in the RPG action adventure realm because I know Dragon Age is still dropping this year, and Dragon Ball is a fighting game. But I don't know. I think they probably have, I think Ubisoft really just disappointed the bulk of the fans. And that may just be impacting them. I don't know what they're going to do if they're going to alter the story. I doubt that it's too late in development for yeah, them to do they, any of that. Yeah. I. But polishment looks good. I'm never mad if y'all polish a video game, but being that I also heard behind the scenes there's some low pre orders and all the controversy surrounding it, I worry about the success of the game and how this may impact their future decisions. I mean, it also nice. could be. It also could be the pre. It could be some business reasonings behind it. Maybe the low pre-order sales was like, okay, let's go back and maybe try to polish and refine some things. So when we do release, maybe that will encourage more people to buy instead of releasing when they said they were. Then it's, oh, this game has bugs, plus the controversy, plus this, then here, this is the reason why the pre-order sales were low, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Oh, February is kind of packed. They got Kingdom Come Deliverance coming out February 11th. Avowed is coming out February 18th. Monster Hunter Wilds, which always gets a certain level of sales, is coming out February 28th. So February is a pretty so packed make, month for gaming. So that just tells you right there that the move wasn't to isolate itself. Yeah, because if they were trying to isolate themselves, they should have went early in January or pushed it even further back to like April or May. So I'm just going to go with that they really want to polish and refine the game. I feel hmm. I can see I can see them being confident. I don't know. I'm an Assassin's Creed fan and I I'm still seeing people complain about it. Like I haven't seen anyone even when it comes to combat like obviously like obviously there's the people who complain about like the choice of the main, one of the MCs. But I also haven't seen anyone just highlight the combat, the graphics. The graphics are usually consistent. It still looks pretty good. But I also don't see them doing anything much better. Even with Mirage and those like back to the basics. I already told y'all Mirage kind of fell flat for me. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they're going to try to add something that's going to surprise us as fans and make us go, oh, Assassin's Creed is back or what. I'm going to play it, but... I don't know. I I think it just goes back to that conversation that we had the first time is that given the controversy and given that the fans are divisive on the character choices for this game is that they they yeah. they have a lot of pressure on how they release this game and the execution and things like that. And it it could just be possible that this is just giving the developers a bit more time to clean up a few things so when this does come out whatever, you know, because the controversy is going to come back up and everything that hopefully that they are confident that they put out a good game, that they've cleaned it up and polished it enough as they could. So when that controversy eventually comes back, they can say, you know, at least we, you know, cleaned up what we could. We, exactly. What I'm interested to see, because it depends on how they handle their contracts and their NDAs, because when games release, that's when you start to hear more about how the developers felt and what right. impact they felt from their business management teams. Cause the process that always, and stuff like that. That always happens. Something goes good. Oh my gosh, I was a part of the main team. Something goes bad. Well, huh, we were in the back saying this was going to be trash. We ain't want this to happen. The big wigs yeah. told us to do it. Yeah. We're we're probably going to see that later. Cause it, I even yeah. sir- I mean, they did the same. They did the same thing with Cyberpunk. When that when yeah. everything went down like I look more I look more into the cyberpunk situation for a class that I had about like investments and like losing money and stuff like that. And C D Project Red got sued yeah, for the sure. for that they got sued by their investors for how they, they handled pissed. that side they how they handled that cyberpunk situation. They were pissed because y'all they, ain't estimated pro- appropriately. Y'all they, they were horrible. telling they weren't communicating like the status of the game correctly they were telling the investors one thing why the developers and everyone on the back end like why would y'all tell them that like that see that whole cyberpunk situation is got bad that's what i'm saying cyberpunk cyberpunk it took them two years to get a patch that made the game playable 
y'all should have y'all should have scoped better and y'all should have released that game two years later i don't care if it was gonna be a seven year tell the investors that y'all money gonna come back because y'all gonna release some fire yeah. and they messed it up yeah. but because dragon age is in the same boat right now like Velgar, that first trailer i was one of the people who said this looks very cartoony it mm-hmm. doesn't give off the vibe of dragon age and then the fans was like y'all ain't real fans dragon age a hey, dragon age always had unserious moments and blah 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 not this unserious it didn't play like some modern oh my gosh we're trying to appeal to that ironic comedy that you're seeing in new age comedies now that are geared more towards older gen z folks nowadays dragon age wasn't like that at first and now you see people like luke steffens who get to get behind with the developers and they play those games um they are in those controlled environments where basically they get the beta test. Mm-hmm. And he was saying even the developers didn't like that trailer. It was their management teams that was like, oh my gosh, this is who we need to appeal to. And even the developers was like, this does not represent our game well. And it didn't. Now, I, fans I would, like me are like, these new trailers look good. I would say the mm-hmm. gameplay that they showed at PlayStation State of Play looked completely different from that initial trailer that we saw. Was that... Whose who's, um, showcase was that when they showed that first? I, I don't think mean. it was Ubisoft. Was it Summer Summer was Games Fest? Was it Summer Fest? Game Fest? Was it Summer so. Game Fest? Maybe. It was something like that because now Sony got the um, marketing rights to Dragon Age. So that's why all you're going to see is PlayStation on the track. But I would, say, I would say that gameplay that they showed at State of Play and what we saw initially are like two completely different vibes. Night and day. Mm-hmm. Make you think you're seeing a whole different game in it. It just makes you think, like, are what are these business management folks over? Like, I know y'all try to see trends on social media and how people feel about things, but when y'all make games, y'all got to make them for the fans. Y'all, y'all, y'all need to stop trying to get these brownie points from other arenas in the social political other landscape. demographics. Man, yeah, these stick stick to your fans and make a good that. game. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's how they want this money. Exactly. Indeed. But other announcements, and then we'll fully hop into PlayStation State of Play. So PlayStation just celebrated their 30th anniversary. They've announced the PS5 Pro. They've announced the 30th edition PlayStation. I think that's also a PS5 Pro, the 30th edition that they just put out. Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can get the controller. You can get the DualShock, which is just the basic controller in the dirty of 30th edition or you can get the dual shock edge which is the one where you can pull off the analog sticks and customize it yeah. the way that you want to um and then nintendo also just celebrated their 135th anniversary so shout out to nintendo and playstation for sticking with it this long what was the console and or game that made y'all gamers, if y'all can recall? My first PlayStation experience was PlayStation 1, playing it with my cousin. She was into, like, Tomb Raider. Um, She had, like, a couple sports games on there that she used to play. But my first... And then she got the PlayStation 2, and I used to play Grand Theft Auto, Street 3, Midnight Club, Need for Speed. I finally got my official PlayStation console was the PlayStation 2 when they came out with that PS2 Slim, the real small joint. Okay. That was my first PlayStation console. Then I got the PSP, then I got the 3, 4, and then we up there with 5. Nintendo. So play- keep going. Nintendo was definitely in 64. So you started Or it might have been Game too. Boy. It might have been Game Boy. It was Game Boy in in 64 for console. And then my parents got me a GameCube. I believe my first full nin- Nintendo console was GameCube. And then I got the Game Boys, Game Boy SP, DS, and all that stuff, Wii's, and all of that. Hmm. I, Ralph, what was your introduction into gaming? I can't remember. I know it was Nintendo. It was the uh, flat one, like the purple kind of see-through one. Uh, the square, the well, square joint, or the advance, the, the Game Boy Advance. The, yeah, the Game Boy Advance. That was the first okay. one I had. Oh, uh, the tanky I, one. Yeah, yeah, I had that. But one. you know, they I had, had the, the um advance. when they were doing like the see through color design because they yeah. did it with PlayStation and the controllers and stuff like that. The yeah. sixty four controllers had that. Yeah, hell yeah. I started with that. Uh, then I went to the PlayStation Portable, which. If you remember, the PlayStation Portable actually had a small screen that was attached. 
it was it was literally like its own little compartment. It had like a small screen that you could put the game in and have a controller and just take it on the go and play wherever. I had that. Uh, I had the PlayStation One, which was that big, uh, that block big gray, one, that big gray, that big gray, that block. big gray box. <laughs> I had that. Uh, then I moved to Xbox. Got an Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. Um, I ended up getting a PlayStation Two right after getting the Xbox uh, Three Hundred and Sixty. Just wanted to go back just to have it. Fair. Mm-hmm. Um, after that, I didn't get the PlayStation Three. I went back with Xbox. I, I skipped the PlayStation. I did not. Yeah. I don't know. Me and the PlayStation, PlayStation 3, 3 was that one that was $500, remember? Yeah. So they yeah. overpriced the when hell they, out of that. Hell yeah. Yeah. When and that I first could. came out, I was like, God. Looking that was at back the- in the day, $500 <laughs> too. $500 yeah. was different then than yeah. it is now. Because I was looking at the PS3. I was like, damn, $500? Back given, then? Given my parents bought it. And I I was thinking maybe it was like maybe three hundred or whatever because like GameCubes mm-hmm. used to be a hundred dollars off real. Yeah. GameCubes used to be a hundred dollars. I think when the Wii came out, I think the Wii was like maybe like two hundred, two fifty. Yeah, I think the Wii think, was yeah, like two fifty. Like and then I looked at them prices and the the price jump from the PS2 to the PS3. I said, damn. Yeah. That's that's why three sixty I think was doing good that generation because they overpriced themselves. I I will remember that. I just I, don't remember. I don't remember like seeing a or talking to a lot of people who had PS threes. Yeah, like everybody I, I talked yeah. to was like Xbox three sixty, Xbox three sixty. Even with the little red mm-hmm. ring of death, folks was rolling. <laughs> folks was still rolling with the Xbox three sixties. Right. I experienced the red ring of death, and it was such a <laughs> dangerous experience. Ooh, I'm, I'm glad Terrible. I did not. Thank God. I bro, you, bro, that was back when like Xbox Live and stuff was still very new. Like online gaming yeah. was still new. Uh-huh. My mom had to watch like YouTube videos with me, and we plugged in my 360 up to her little Windows XP desktop, <laughs> trying to download patches and everything <laughs> for it. Oh my gosh, I was so pissed. I was like, "Mom, my Xbox broke." <laughs> mm-hmm. I can see. Time. Sad time. Sad time. Man. They couldn't. They couldn't. Are y'all hear that? I do hear some music in the background. That must be Antoine and King. Well, somebody. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, my first console is between the N64 and the Game Boy. My cousin had the PS1 and we played that okay. Yu-Gi-Oh game and Spider-Man on it. And my auntie had the OG Xbox and we played some little fantasy game. And I still don't know the name of it, but N64, I was playing Tarzan, Mario Kart 64, Super nice. Mario wwe Man, 2000 diddy, i used diddy Kong racing yeah. um du- uh 007 007, 007 was, was fire lit. on the playstation that smash bros lit. on the 64 is interesting to see Sweet. as because i didn't play i didn't when i initially had n64 i didn't play smash bros so i came into smash bros when melee came out melee mm-hmm. on gamecube mm-hmm. so i played melee brawl ultimate and then i went over a friend's house and he had smash bros 64 and i looked at the graphics the character roster let's just start there tiny tiny then the graphics i was like this is interesting i appreciate the growth of super smash bros from 64 to now even mario kart i'll give it to those two shit i'll give it to zelda too Look, when it comes to Mario Kart, bro, Double Dash is still in my top three. It's Mario Kart Wii, Double Dash, and after that, y'all can pick y'all, y'all can pick y'all poison. It's whoever y'all want to put for number three. I would say my number one, just because I play it more frequently, like now, is MK8. MK, I don't know what they would do on Mario Kart 9 to beat what they've done with eight. Like, number mm-hmm. one is eight. The online, fe- three, the online features, the track selection, all of the, the customization features. I, I'm i not mad at you picking Wii because Wii was when we first got that taste of like customization, yeah. the different type of cars that you can get and the players and stuff like that. I'll give you that. And then Double Dash, I'll give you Double Dash because that was when I got that GameCube. I had the GameCube bundle pack that came with Double Dash. Hmm. Look, bro, I just remember those GameCube days, bro, when you would just sit down, you plug up your four controllers back when memory cards was what, 
eight megabytes. Yeah, y'all remember yeah. how there was memory cards and we would have to go get them at yeah. Toys R Us and Toys R Us Best Buy. Crazy. Look, and the, I remember I was playing one game. It was Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness on GameCube. They was like, "Oh, you need a memory card to play this." And then my PlayStation Two did the same thing with the Ratchet and Clank. I was like, where do I get a memory card? What is that? Shout out <laughs> shout out to my dad, because I never had to worry about memory cards. Because when they bought me that game, they got me a memory card. The memory right. card came. They, I, I would open the first present, and it's the console. And then I open the next box, and there's a couple games in a memory card. And I'd be like, I'm sick. Look, my mom was looking at me like, what's a memory card? I'm like, look, the screen says I need a memory card or I can't save my game data. And Same. she's like, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> she she it on the phone like with her friend. Baby, baby, ask, ask, ask your son. He got a game, right? I just bought Ryan this game. Ask him what a memory card is. Why why he need a memory card? Cause, Bruh, cause uh, I'm finna cut I'm finna cuss him out. He asked me one more time about a memory card. <laughs> bro. Oh my god. And now these games are called what is it? Not legacy. What's the word for saying they're old? Vintage. Not antique. That, like now the Wii is like vintage or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, how old are we? I would say the minute this is the moment I knew that we was finna go vintage. When they said they were shutting down the Nintendo store on the Wii U, yeah. I said, Oh, it's wraps for y'all. It's wraps. Yeah. When they start they, shutting, when they start shutting down online features and stores for certain consoles, it's wraps for y'all. But these folks will never know how we felt. <sighs> When the we when Mario Kart Wii came out and we had them wheels, it was the marketing. Had, uh, that was the marketing it, for the Wii, the marketing for the Wii for Mario Kart for the sports games, especially when Mario and Sonic at the Olympics came out. Mm-hmm. You oh, over yeah. here on the track game the doing mar- all of this. Yeah. The marketing for the Wii Look. for some of those games. Look, so folks talk about toxic masculinity now. When Wii Sports Boxing came out, you want to know what all the guy cousins were fussing about in, at Thanksgiving dinner? Oh God, you ain't gonna beat me in no box. Boxing, you ain't gonna beat me in no box. Boxing, <laughs> bowling. Yeah. Look, bro. Nintendo and PlayStation came a long way. Shout out to them. Nah, for real. Mm-hmm. For real, I'm definitely excited on what they do next. Uh, PlayStation just announced the PS5 Pro. We're still waiting for the Switch 2 announcement. I that's going That's going to be the next big thing. I'm waiting. Yeah. I'm ready for them to announce the Switch 2 and everything that's coming with it. How long are we away from that? Next year. They said they said it's next year. They said they're not announcing it until it no I think they said they are not announcing the Switch 2 this year at all. Like, it's mm-hmm. gotten to the point to where when they announce a Nintendo Direct, they have to specifically state in the announcement that there will be no mention of the Switch 2. Mario Kart 9, is that going to be the dropper game or is it going to be a Zelda game? I There's, It's going to be that one game and it's going to be an exclusive. Super, another Super Mario 2D? 3D? I think it's going to be Kart. I think if, if we want to stick with tradition, if we stick with tradition, it's going to be Mario Kart. They're gonna do more. They'll they'll probably do Mario Kart and Zelda at the same time. Although I don't know if they'll do Zelda because they just dropped that new Zelda game. Like and that was that this, this year or last week. year. That this is this year, not um, Tears of the Kingdom. This is a new Legend of Zelda game that they just dropped recently. Hmm. Oh, that missed my I missed that on my okay. timeline. What's it called? It's called the. Um, See, this one we need Antoine on these regular episodes too. I just talked to Antoine <laughs> about this. Mm. Echoes See? of wisdom. Mm. Echoes of wisdom. Okay, yeah, it got to be a Mario Kart. I it's, don't know what they're going to do with Smash gonna, Brothers. It's probably going to be. I'm. I think they're going to do Smash Bros. I think Mario Kart and Smash Bros. are defaults. I just don't know how they're going to do it. Like when we were when we were just ranking the Mario Kart stuff. I I don't know what. They're going to pull out their ass for Mario Kart 9. Now, I'm telling them the planes. I'm telling them bring back the planes, I, but I don't know. I, I say know. make it a triathlon. I, I, we did. We had that argument. Planes, boats, and cars. Make it all three. I don't know. Because the way that they've built out MK8, like, people are still playing online. Anytime I play MK8, I'm online. I'm not playing no Grand Prix, time trials, none of that. I'm online, and there's consistently people there's a youtube channel that i watch where he's cons- they they be playing for real 
tournaments and all of that. They got Discord channels for this mm. shit. Well, I don't know, bro. Nintendo, it's Nintendo. I, I, the only thing I hope they do, I hope they make this next console so valuable that we have to get it. Because I remember when the Switch Two dropped at first, I think we was all, I think we was all in college talking about this in the, um, the first at the Switch. Uh, yeah, when when Switch One dropped, we was all like, nah. When Smash Bros. dropped, that's when we're going to get Switches. And that's when I got mine yeah. instantly. I think they're gonna have to. I think I know they they came out with the was it the Switch LED? Like what's that? OLED, something. the Switch yeah, OLED OLED. or something yeah. like that. They're gonna I think just as because of how graphics have come a long way, the demand, and especially with some of the um the pushback from them trying to put like those high quality games on that system, that Mortal Kombat shit, just to be just to put out one example, they're going to they're going to have to pull out the muscle for this first showcase of this system. And that's the thing. It's like, I I wonder if they're going to try new features. Obviously, they're the motion control leaders, but I'm like, what's going to be that new thing for this? If it's just good graphics, I'm not mad. But what is that new thing y'all are doing with the Switch 2? I I don't know. It has to be better graphics. It has to. That's number one. That's definitely. Combat was terrible. It definitely was terrible. But I feel like that's expected, though. Like, we're expecting it to be better graphics. What's going to be that one thing that we're not going to be expecting that they put in the Switch to? VR. So, so, man, shit. AR. I don't know. They just made the announcement that they're not going to do, they're not going to be doing anything with AI. So, we can count that out. Yeah. I can see VR to an extent, but I don't know. I mean that's the next that's the yeah. next thing up. Play state you got play if they yeah. want to compete. That's going back to our year old conversation. If they want to compete, PlayStation VR. If they Nintendo could easily do it. Yeah, because the next console yeah. generation. Now that we're finally getting refreshes, like from Sony, the next console generation is like three to five years away. But the whole thing is, y- y'all still ain't even mastered four K sixty on a lot of games. So pushing for like 8K60 or something like that, probably unnecessary. If anything, right. y'all are have to, going to have to polish and integrate VR fully. Mm-hmm. Like PlayStation has done it, but now Microsoft need to catch on board too, unless they finna go the route where they don't have consoles anymore, which a lot of people are predicting. I would hate that, but it seems like that's what they might go for. I can see mm-hmm. that happening with Microsoft. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. We'll wait. 2025. We'll see. But, um... Moving into PlayStation State of Play, we did mention some of the games that they showed and announced. Um, like they showed a gameplay trailer for Dragon Age. Ryan mentioned uh, Monster Hunter. Um, they did announce the Ghost of Tsushima sequel, the Ghost of Yoti. Yote, Yote, Yote. Um, a DLC for Astrobot. Uh, Power World, interestingly enough, is coming to PS Five. And I feel like that's hilarious because before a, the PlayStation State of Play, they Nintendo was filing mm-hmm. that lawsuit, and then they turn around at the PlayStation State of Play and say, "Yeah, Paul World's coming to the PS5." That's mm-hmm. so funny. That's be, so fucking funny. It's funny how that works, right? It's that funny is, how that works, right? That is that's so a fucking slap funny. To Nintendo's face, if I've ever seen one. Here's here's the thing. I know we got to talk about everything else. I know we got to talk about everything else, but. Somebody need to give Pokemon some competition and make them get they they together. Go ahead, I'm say glad. It. No, I'm glad. I already been cussing too much. I'm glad that Power World is putting some fire under their ass. I'll say that for you. I'm glad that Power World is getting Pokemon together and making them um stress a little bit because y'all need to innovate. I'm sorry, all y'all Nintendo fans who always come at us because y'all be the first ones to come. In. I don't care. I don't care. They need to do better. We need some fire yeah. under their ass. Let Power World win. Let Power World get up there. And put some fire on her. Innovate. I just thought it was hilarious. They was they was like, oh, you got a lot, so we got some for your ass. And Sony's like, look what we got, Power. That is <laughs> that is that was so funny to me. Cause I think we talked about it. A nice Pokemon game 
with proper graphics on Xbox and Sony, listen, with the actual graphical fidelity to actually do some great stuff without having to see map mountains load up in the background. Oh, mm-hmm. I was over with. I would be interested. I wonder if they're holding off on Pokemon until the Switch 2 comes out. And I would be interested to see if they've innovated anything with Pokemon for when that when that drops. Because with the Switch 2, even though it came out years later after the the um when it was first announced, they did do that Let's Go Pikachu bundle pack, because that's what I got. The bundle. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Then they announced a new wasn't a Pokemon game announced a few at the last My, Nintendo Direct? I, some something. Yeah, some new Pokemon thing so. is coming. And I wonder if that's what they're saving for the PS5. And I wonder if this is going to be a completely new way that you play Pokemon. Mm-hmm. But they're the place- saving, it, but they're saving it for the Switch Two. I think they're saving a lot of. I think they're saving a lot for the Switch Two. It makes sense to do that. PlayStation State of Play, though. I saw obviously Ghost of Tsushima, female lead. You're going to see the criticism Ghost of that. Of I've Yote. seen a little bit of that Respect on. Her. Yeah. Yote. Yeah, Yote. Ghost of Yote. Ghost of Yote. So it's an old. So it's completely okay. So all that's yeah, new. So okay. It's completely mm-hmm. So I've seen some people, um, obviously complaining about that. But I heard that Ghost of Tsushima was so good that as long as they got that combat and get yeah, there, I heard it was good. They'll too. get over it. I think I want to play Y'all it. Y'all haven't played I it. I, I got it. I that's one of those exclusives. I still well, you know that's you know that's not my my go to for games let's, but let's, it's it's been a minute since i've actually picked up my ps5 that i feel like maybe i need to dive into some other genres so i can have me some shit to play look look, mm-hmm. look at me look at me play that game play that game mm-hmm. that game is good that game is ralph really said good. get in it ralph that said get in the really field good. yeah as an overall mm-hmm. game ghost of tsushima deserved that game of the year for sure for the way they the way it starts and gets you immersed into it and gets you to actually feel like you're there in the world is lovely it's lovely and okay. i hope and pray that they do the same for ghost Yote. uh the voice actor is uh erica ishi and if anybody plays apex that is the same voice actor for valkyrie okay i used to like so, valkyrie okay yeah so she. She's a good voice actor. I like I like Val's voice. So I'm interested to see how how she in how she is in this, you know, fighting pretty much fighting storytelling game. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, the okay. graphics the graphics look nice. I was like, okay. And and from the way my TL was responding, because they made that the very last announcement. I was like, oh, this was the big one. This is what everybody was waiting for. Because if yeah, y'all exactly. would have showed that at the beginning, why well, nobody else going to be watching the rest of the, the no. state of play? <laughs> Signing out. That's all yeah. they want. And I was like, okay, thanks. Click, drop, 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 drop. Astrobot looks fun. It reminded me of like those Mario 3D games. And I would check it out just to see like what's the similarities and the differences is. Yeah. Hmm. I didn't watch that. I wasn't mad at the showcase. I wasn't mad at it. I I feel like other stuff is highlighting as it has me distracted though, being that Dragon Age Veilguard is on the way and Eclipsing. Dragon Ball Z is on the way. Eclipsing yeah. it, yeah. But I'm excited for the Ghost of Tsushima fans. They're getting Ghost of Yote. I saw that Keanu Reeves is the voice of Shadow for yeah, a video a sh- game DLC. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's a Shadow. It's Sonic something DLC where you can play a Shadow and it's yeah, Keanu Reeves Because he's Shadow it. in the movie as well, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see that that's a nice connection. Sega's in their bag. I'm not mad at that. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, I wasn't mad at it. I think they have a lot of good games coming up. I didn't see some that I was fairly interested in, but like I just said previously, um, maybe I just need to open myself to other genres of games and stuff. How'd you feel about that Alan Wake DLC? Did you play Alan Wake, Ralph? I did not. I did okay, because I was going to ask you how you felt about the, the DLC that's coming out. Yeah, I... I have been behind on I have been behind on picking up Adam Wake. I don't even think I've bought it yet, actually. I don't even think it's in my game. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, that's a, 
That's how my We're becoming the adults we hated when we used to be like, we'll never stop gaming. We'll never slow down on gaming. Get I mean, don't, a lot don't of hobbies. get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Gaming ain't slow down, but I just forgot to get the game. I haven't touched it. Because you still be on Apex or Ace, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When yeah, that new I'll... Battlefield come out, we're going to be on there. I'm gonna be, we're going to be back. Get Man. in the field. But um, that's all we had. You guys have anything else? Oh, I know what I didn't, what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to tell you guys about that Transformers anime. Uh, she did mention She mentioned that. I um, mentioned that on the. Uh, Antoine remo- recorded something else. Uh, no, that was from the Netflix Geek Week. Oh, that recording. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so here it goes. As part of the 40th anniversary celebrations for the Transformers franchise, it has been revealed that Studio Trigger is working on a new Transformers anime. So Cyberpunk Edge Runners and all in Killer Kills yeah. Studio. Okay. Huh. Yeah. A Transformer anime could work though. Not gonna lie. That could work. I even heard be Transformers lit. 1 is getting some good reviews. You said what? Yeah. Oh, Transformers 1 is fire. I just saw that. Last night, that was, was good. good. That was good shit. That was good shit. Okay, that I was, have to make some plans this weekend. That was that was good shit. Um, definitely explain. I, I it was a good origin story to a lot of elements that we already knew. Of like how Optimus became Optimus, Megatron became Megatron. How they all got split up in the Autobots and Decepticons, like that whole. How they explained everything, I was like, I like, I, I like the way they did that. I definitely uh-huh. like the way that they did that, and, and definitely opened the door for them to make more movies after that. Now, I did see recently that the box office earnings um, aren't there. I think they're tracking. Uh, I think the last thing I saw, they were like at maybe like seventy two million, and the budget for the movie was like seventy five. So I don't know. Oh, that's kind of. I had to say it was kind of expected, though. Not not based on the reviews, like it being good isn't what was expected. I think a lot of people just didn't expect to enjoy it, so they just ain't running there. I think I it's what we talked about offline that the Transformers franchise doesn't have a good track run. Yeah, like after Dark of the Moon. Like the Transformer franchise started going downhill, and this yeah. looks so new because they it's a, it's a full animated movie too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, the fact that it's fully animated, some people already don't like. They and, think animation is cartoony and for younger kids, right? Kids. And then maybe the designs turn everybody off because they they look more like how they did in the two D in the eighties, like in the cartoons. That's what the Autobots look like. And if you look at them compared to what Michael Bay pulled out his ass, a completely different design. So it really just depends on what piece of the Transformer franchise you are attached to on how you perceive Transformers 1. But I like Transformers, period. So watching one, I wasn't mad at it. I wasn't I'm mad a, at it. I'm a Michael Bay fan. I have to. If I'm being honest, I think I used to watch the cartoons, but I have more of an affinity for the Michael Bay stuff. If Michael Bay is good as far as the effects, the how the Transformers look, Lincoln tie in Lincoln Park, tie in the fact that they got these nice ass cars, like you can see yourself being in these cars. That's what Michael and the fact that IMAX was becoming big and you got this big choo 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 moving. <laughs> Michael Bay Michael Bay had a lot of stuff going to him, but one thing I will say about Michael Bay's Transformers run, the plot was not there. The plot was not there. Hmm. Transformers 1 has a nice linear plot that you can follow this from beginning to end. See, okay. if they did the plot, but with like the graphics from the Michael Bay films, like that live action, high tech, blah, 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 I think it probably would have hit for real forever for more people. It would have been more mass appealing. Yeah. But I, I also feel like. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. Just given the fact that when Transformers initially came back, it was the Michael Bay films and the way they built everything up and whatever. I, I feel that. But Transformers 1 was nice, y'all. 
It was nice. I have to go get also, the watch. Also, before we close out, I got my Ravenclaw shirt on. We got to do a RIP, bro. Oh, uh, yeah. RIP mm-hmm. to Dame Maggie Smith. Um, For Harry Potter fans, she played Professor McGonagall, but she was also in a couple other movies like Sister Act and things like mm-hmm. that. She passed, I believe, that, was that Friday? She passed. Oh. I was yes. I was it yesterday or was it the day before yesterday? I think it was Friday. It was Friday. September twenty oh, yeah. seventh. Yeah, the twenty seventh. So R I P. I did see a video of um there were a ton of people who went to Universal Studios and raised their wands into the and the Hogs Meat section. So R I P. I got her wand, Funko Pop, the Funko Pop of her with Hogwarts, they all right in front of me over there. I'm man. So I know her wine expensive right now. I'm pretty oh, sure the, the same. actual prop, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The what they used in the movie, yeah. But I pay for that. The wines, <laughs> the the wines in the store are already expensive. You can't get more expensive yeah. for a piece of plastic than what they just did than at this store. Yeah, yeah, that's true. New. The way we went to Universal, most of my budget went towards the ones and the Harry Potter robe. Like <laughs> that was like three hundred dollars, right? We got that. What was it like that little gift card? That was like if you spend this much money, you get a free one, and I did that. Yeah, I said the robe covered that instantly. Yeah. All right, Peter. Though McGonagall is my favorite character in Harry Potter. Some people don't look at me crazy when I say that she was my favorite character. I loved her. No, nah, she was. Yeah, she was and the, if I had a top ten of Harry Potter characters, she'll definitely be in there. Mm-hmm. R.I.P. Uh, to the goat. Yeah. Do y'all have anything else for the episode? Nah, that's pretty much it. I enjoyed having you back, Ralph. Oh yeah, it was good. It was good to be able to come back. It, it nice. felt good. Yeah, it felt to be good. back in the studio. <sighs> Flex my wings a little bit. I love that mm-hmm. for you, Ralph. Get them vocal cords back in shape. You know, we me, back me, on the me, mic. Me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> but there, if there isn't anything else, let's go ahead and shut this down. So once again, thank you, Ryan and Ralph, for joining me on another episode of the Blurred Mob Podcast. Shout out to everybody who watched or listened to this episode. Whether this is your first time or 50th time, it is always appreciated. To stay in tune with what the mob has going on, make sure you follow us on our social media platforms. We're on Instagram at the Blur Mob Pod. We're on Twitter at the Blur Mob, and you can find us on Facebook and TikTok at the Blur Mob Podcast. And make sure you check out those links in the description on ways to support the mob. All donations uh, go towards software, equipment, and everything that we use to bring you guys these lovely episodes. And with that all being said, this is the mob checking out. Peace. Mario is driving cars, playing golf, baseball. Tennis, basketball. Tennis, basketball. He fighting folks. Smash bros. He done been to the Olympics multiple times. He done went to the Olympics. He got a billion dollar movie in the box office.